Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the Best Aim EDC. And over the years, I've had a million different kits. I've had tool kits, knife maintenance kits, pouches and bags for all sorts of different things. And uh, I have done two separate videos, one on my EDC toolkit and then another on my knife maintenance kit. And over the last two years, they've really kind of had some overlap and stuff and it has kind of narrowed down into one single kit. This is fairly compact, but not like super compact, but it has everything. So this is not like a tool bag full of all the stuff that I need to do anything, but rather like light duty tools and more or less like knife maintenance or EDC gear maintenance, camera maintenance. It's just a lightweight toolkit that I can use for small jobs. I've got a much beefier toolkit in my truck, which we can talk about later. But today we're talking about this EDC toolkit and the 15 things that I have inside it. So with that said, let's do the damn thing. So for the uninitiated, this is the NAFS Tool Burrito. I said back, I think in my gift guide for Christmas that this was one of the best value tool rolls. If you get it loaded, it's amazing. It's a, it's a great value at the price point. And I mean, I have this thing like exploded. This has gone to like full Chipotle burrito status. It is bursting at the seams, but I have everything I need in here that I use regularly for maintaining my gear, be it a knife, a camera, whatever i have everything i need for all of that so first and foremost i think you should have pliers in any toolkit in this one i've got the knipex five inch cobra pliers there's also a four inch set and then obviously just a leatherman or a victorinox swiss tool there's there's a billion different sets of pliers that would work in this i, I think the knipex is the best set of pliers that you can get the close second would be a leatherman but anything like that that you can use to hold things and grip while you're working, maybe you can turn some bolts or whatever, pliers are infinitely useful. I don't need to explain pliers to you, but typically it's gonna be one of these two in my kits. The second thing that every EDC toolkit needs is a really solid bit driver. I actually keep two in here for a couple of reasons. The two that I have in here are the iFixit precision driver that comes with that loaded tool burrito or used to, and this right here, this is the Combat Beads or Griffin Company Precision Driver. Uh, and this is the V2 that has the bit storage in the handle, which we will talk about in just a little bit. Uh, but the reason I typically have two of these is I keep a T6 in this one and a T8 in these. These are the two most common. And if you're disassembling a knife, it's nice to just like, you don't have to swap bits just to turn some screws. That That's really annoying. But the other reason is I have a T8 and a T6 for each of these. So if you have a knife that doesn't have a captive pivot, you can sandwich the knife and turn one. There have been many knives over the years where if you don't have two Torx bits, it's damn near impossible to get that pivot to stop free spinning. So two precision drivers is what I carry. It's not necessary all the time, but it's what I've come to need more often than not. But uh, just as a quick example of some other ones, there is a company called Good Screw. So this is a zirconium driver from them. One of my more recent pickups is the Inline Max from Big Idea Design. This thing is awesome because it takes those Leatherman bits and it works really, really well with something else we're gonna talk about, which is gonna come as no surprise to you. The Big Eye TI ED or EDS, that thing is a really nice little frame locking screwdriver. I actually like these, but it's probably the least ergonomic of all of these. And then really quickly, we have this. This is a brand new item from NAFS or Ben Peterson. And this is his own bit driver. It stores the bits on the outside of the handle with some O-rings and it takes micro bits. Um, these are WIA bits and it's really nice. And I believe this is probably gonna take the place of this uh, iFixit because to store the bits in here, I just have them in a Ziploc inside this little zip pouch, which not super handy. So this thing is gonna get replaced with this NAFS bit driver. But yeah, bit driver, absolutely need one in any toolkit. The next item I was talking about is this thing right here. I've sung its praises for a very long time now, basically since it came out or since I first got my hands on it. And that is the Leatherman ratchet driver. If you've not used this thing, you are absolutely missing out. So this kind of goes back to talking about the, the precision drivers that we were talking about. If you do pick up one like this NAFS driver, it doesn't work with that. You need at least a quarter inch driver However, if you're using something like a Leatherman, like a Leatherman Wave or Charge, 
that has the interchangeable bits, you can use this with that and adapt to a full quarter inch bit. There's a lot of variables here in how you're gonna put your own kit together, but you could also use this in anything that has a quarter inch bit driver like this right here. You, you can use this with a lot of different stuff. So even if you don't have that bit driver, you could still use this with the millions of EDC tools that just happen to have quarter inch drivers on them. So that's why I really like this thing. If you need something that's got a little more torque and your bit driver, your inline driver like this one right here, doesn't quite give you the right torque, you can use, here's another example. This pry tool right here has the ability to run a driver on it as well. So this thing is super handy and uh, I'm always gonna have one in one of my toolkits. Leatherman ratchet driver worth its weight in gold. Now coming back to this uh, precision driver from Combat Beads, the other thing I would highly recommend is an array of bits. So in this, you've only got Torx bits. That's helpful for most EDC applications, but I would highly recommend storing other bits like Phillips, Flathead, even hex bits if you can get your hands on them. Uh, quarter inch hex bits are awesome, but you'll come across tools from time to time. And here's a perfect example, like this Urban Carver's Keeper. The Pivot on this is actually a 2.5 hex, I believe. So if you've only got Torx and you don't have any hex, you can't work on all of your tools. So having the right bit for the job, crucial. Get the Wea bit kits if you can. Just stick to Wea bits, honestly. <laughs> That's like a golden rule of EDC at this point or just tools in general at this point. Uh, if you can get Wea bits, get Wea bits. And then we're gonna talk about probably the thing in EDC that I get the most questions about, and that is a damn pry bar. What are you prying all the time so that you need to carry one of these in your pocket? Well, truthfully, I rarely carry a pry bar in my pocket these days. I typically keep them down inside one of these kits, but they are super handy. Um, I've been saying for years, my biggest use case for a pry bar is just a big, wide, sturdy flathead that I can use to turn camera plates or whatever for my cameras, this is the, the tool I tend to use. What I would use one of these for is prying knife scales apart. A PM2 in particular, when you're trying to pop that lanyard tube for the first time, can be very, very difficult. Sometimes popping scales off of knives can be difficult. So you can use this, wedge it in between the scales and you can pop them apart without bending and breaking stuff. Really gives you the leverage you need sometimes and just a general scraper tool or whatever. And typically I like tool steel. So we have a 1095 and I believe this one is 01 tool steel, I believe, or AEBL. Um, they're just better for prying and beating up than titanium, but you know, titanium pocket tools look nicer and cooler, but you know, the real heavy duty ones are going to be in some sort of tool steel. And just going back to bit drivers, one last thing to mention, uh, if you can get something that pulls double duty, like the Vero Fulcrum or Fulcrum Mini, you have a screwdriver and a pry bar in one. So any chance you can get to, you know, double down, find something that pulls double duty, like a Leatherman, which is going to cover a lot of these different tools or a Vero Fulcrum, any of these things, uh, that's better in one of these kits. It's going to help you keep it smaller, more compact, and still have all that functionality. Okay, getting onto more of a, a maintenance side of things, uh, something you can't really go wrong with having and usually doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And even if you, you might even be wearing it, a strop. So this is kind of old school now. I don't even know if they're still making these. This is the Benchmade WorkSharp collaboration. I think they called it the KMT, knife maintenance tool. I think, I can't remember exactly. These went fast. I don't know if they still make them. If they do, Great, it's a little expensive for what it is, but you have a ceramic cone and a strop. Nine times out of 10, maybe even more than that, when your knife starts to feel like it's not cutting quite right, you can just strop it and kind of get that cutting edge back. You don't always need to sharpen. And even before you sharpen, try a ceramic rod first because it may just need to be honed and stropped and you're good to go. So that's why I really like this tool. It's It's been worth the money, but at the same time, it's kind of expensive for what it is. You can get a cheaper hone and strop than this one. It's just compact. Uh, and then Ben over at NAFS does sell this strop. Uh, don't pay attention to the compound on here. The honing compound just kind of globbed up on me. But yes, a strop is a really, really good tool. He sells these. They're very cheap. Or you could just use a scrap piece of leather. You could use the inside of your belt. There are a million ways you can strop a knife. But having a strop in your kit is absolutely crucial. And this is where a lot of that compound just rubbed off. It's just the, the nature of having a strop inside a pouch like this. Do I need both of these in here? No, but I have them. So what? Okay, so next 
is lube. So I have nano oil in the kit that I'm, I use the most. I also have some Tough Glide down the hall. I have some Benchmade Blue. Honestly, uh, any lube's better than no lube. I used to use KPL pretty religiously until I realized that like after maybe two weeks or so, my knives that I put KPL on would feel kind of gritty. So I've kind of shied away from using KPL and steered more towards the Nano Oil, Tough Glide, and some others. These tubes are not cheap. They're like 17, 18, maybe $20 per tube, but they last for a long time. But yeah, they don't take up a lot of space and sometimes all your knife really needs is a little bit of lubrication. So it's always good to have some lube. And I just like the way that these pin applicators carry more so than like the KPL bottles and, and especially the, the Benchmade Blue. I've had Benchmade Blue leak on me a ton. So I've switched over to carrying one of these. And if you're gonna be taking your knife apart, to put some lube on it and clean everything up. This is also gonna be on your list, absolutely. Loctite Blue. Uh, this came in this loaded tool burrito and I actually like this applicator a good bit. It's not too runny like the tubes, like when you have those little red tubes of Loctite, as Alex learned <laughs> last week even, um, those things can be like wild. You, if it gets a little warm and you just gently squeeze the tube, Loctite goes everywhere. But these don't seem to do that nearly as bad. But my favorite, are these Loctite 248, the Loctite Blue, in the glue stick form. I've had this thing for three or four years. I've barely ever had to twist it up. This stuff goes a very long way, and I prefer this application because you can really control how much you're putting on your knife. But a tube of Loct Loctite like this is always in one of my kits. I use this stuff for so much more than just knife maintenance and making sure body screws and pivot screws don't run themselves out. But you know, Loctite, it's a universally applicable thing. Tweezers, so I don't like these tweezers, honestly. Uh, I don't even know where these came from. I think these came from that DIY watch club kit that I had. They are very pointy, very pokey, and they kind of hurt if you jab yourself with them. Uh, I just put this O-ring on there so I can keep them closed inside this pouch. Uncle Bill's sliver grippers are really good, they're cheap. I lost mine, I don't know where they are, but tweezers are always a good thing to have around. The reason I don't like these is this very fine point that you're using to grip something. If you're picking up something like a bearing, which is what I use them for when I'm doing something on like a Shirogorov, you go to pick up a bearing, if you squeeze it just wrong, just slightly wrong, that tiny little bearing can go flying and you're never gonna find it. Um, same with a body screw or something. If you need to pick up something small with this, just having those really narrow tips on them just make things go flying way more than if you've got something with some wide pinchers. We'll, we'll say wide blade tweezers are just better, but these are what I've got. And they've just been in this kit for a long time. Uh, I need to just buy some more sliver grippers, but I haven't. So tweezers are better than no tweezers. The other thing is a Sharpie. So uh, Sharpies are good and obviously have many more uses than like a pen or pencil. I like the Sharpie if I'm sharpening a knife. I use a Sharpie to, you know, mark the edge to make sure I'm getting the angle right. Um, I, I use it for a lot of different stuff, but always have a Sharpie for obvious reasons, right? It's just something that's useful to have in your little maintenance kit. So the next thing I always have in every kit ever, um, I've got these things like everywhere in my life. They're down the hall in the carry commission office. They are freaking everywhere. I have boxes of them. Literally, it was just in this tray. I, I just have boxes and boxes of alcohol wipes. And I use these for when I'm doing knife maintenance, I'll tear this open, I'll clean every little bit with this. Rather than doing an alcohol bath, I'll just wipe everything down with a couple of these alcohol pads. And uh, in fact, I'm a little low in this kit, but they're infinitely useful. I use them after I've sharpened a knife, I've used them for assembly, I use them to clean my knife blades off. Obviously, alcohol wipes have a ton of uses, and that's kind of the theme here. I want things that, that have multiple uses. I've said that a few times, alcohol wipes. It's just something I always have in my kits. Also, because I use these things so, so much, zip ties. Uh, I've got assortment of sizes, bunch of little ones, two medium size. I have them all in my truck. I have these things everywhere. I buy them in bulk and I use them for everything. I love them. I love them so much. I have a new truck that's like a month old and I bet it has 30 zip ties on it. <laughs> I just use them for everything. I love them. Uh, so they just say in the kit, they don't take up a lot of space, but they have a lot of uses. Uh, I didn't include this on the list, but it kind of goes hand in hand going back a step with the alcohol pads is Q-tips. Um, I keep these in here for those hard to reach places like cleaning inside. If you've got a Chicago screw as your pivot, sometimes you get Loctite stuck way down in there and you can jam a Q-tip down in there and get it out. Uh, I just use it for hard to reach places when, when cleaning a knife and stuff, but it's, it's just one of those that goes with the alcohol. All right, next up we have another item that doesn't really require any kind of introduction, utility knives. Uh, you guys know I love the TPT slide. I've been carrying this, this one for years. 
and just beat it up, carry it everywhere. Always use this thing, tearing down boxes, whatever. Anything I don't want to just thrash my blade with, I'll throw this thing at it and, you know, usually handles the job. But I keep one in my kit for, you know, other reasons, just having a spare blade, honestly, sometimes or whatever there you can get them very cheap this screw pop is like nine or ten dollars or at least used to be can't really say anything from memory anymore because the prices have changed so much but you also have this this is from key unity this is a slip joint scalpel you have this uh no name flipper scalpel there's a bunch and these are not that expensive you can get these things for pretty cheap now the point is a replaceable blade that you can put in that kit and keep some spares uh just for you know weird odd things that you don't necessarily need a full size knife for or tearing down boxes, stuff like that. And frankly, it's probably about time I do another roundup on utility knives because it has literally been like three years since I've done one. Anyway, utility knife or scalpel, whichever one you want to call it. So the next one, some of you are probably going to roll your eyes. Uh, I typically have like this little pack of, you know, tough needles, but I, I don't know where it went. But basically a SIM tool or something that can poke things very, very, tiny points the uh, victorinox compact has one in the handle like a, just a little needle and what i use this for is like reset buttons on things those are still a thing apparently sim removals if you need to pop a sim out of a phone uh just something very fine that you can use to get into something very very tiny uh this is a titanium toothpick that i put in one of my videos for like unusual EDC. I kept it around because it's it's actually helpful. It, it just gets lost. It, it just gets tucked away in like pockets sometimes and you just can't find it. It's so small, but to that effect, it's actually very handy for, for that. Uh, so I always keep something like this around. And another reason I don't have a watch with a bracelet on, but when you have a watch with drilled lugs, you can use this SIM tool to pop the bracelet off. So. I mean, a bunch of different uses for a tiny little pin like that. And uh, it's just good to have either like disposable, replaceable ones like this or something a little more sturdy that you can actually get a grip on like this, this mini toothpick. I don't remember the name of this thing, but all this stuff will be linked down below, even all the different alternatives and stuff I've mentioned. But yeah, some sort of pick, a needle, SIM tool, something like that. I always have them in these kits because you never know when you're going to need one. And then finally, uh, a little handkerchief or a cloth of some sort. I like these handkerchiefs with a microfiber back because they're great for wiping off screens, camera lenses. They're also good for like holding stuff and keeping things from rolling away if you need to keep like small items and stuff. It, it's just better than laying it on the table and having it roll around. You can just throw it on a cloth and it doesn't roll as bad. But just having something like this that you can wipe things down with, uh, wipe screens, knife blade, whatever, a little cloth like this is just it's great to have. And sometimes it's not even a, a handkerchief. Sometimes I just use like a shop cloth in one of these, uh, like, like shop rags. I have a bunch of those laying around. Whatever I've got, I'll throw in one of these kits. More often than not, it's gonna be like a handkerchief. And that's, that's everything that I would absolutely recommend keeping in your EDC kit. But I have two little bonuses for you. This is like what I call a little spare parts bin. So a little spare bit or these little SIM tools. I keep a little D1 refill in here for my Big Idea Design click pin. I keep the mini click in my pocket and I have a spare refill in here. Just tiny little things that will otherwise get lost. I keep them in these little trays. They're just really handy. These trays are very, very cheap on Amazon. You know, you can grab this and your little knickknacks are in here. So spare parts bin. And then this, if you are like me and rust every damn thing you touch, um, I've been carrying more and more fixed blades. And a lot of these fixed blades are not stainless. Some of the knives I carry now, not stainless. This stuff is awesome for that. This is red-eyed hog bee fat. This is a combination of beeswax and hog fat. It's just to keep your blade from rusting. It's a coating. You, you rub this on your blade like a glue stick and then kind of work it in and wipe it off and you have a protective layer on your tool seals. Um, so I don't keep it in this kit, but I do keep these these sticks around everywhere because they are handy, especially for me, because I rust everything. I've rusted everything from, actually, it's easier for me to tell you what I haven't rusted because I have not rusted Vanax, but I have rusted Magna Cut. I have rusted uh, basically everything else. S90V, S110V, I've rusted everything, even Magna Cut. But point is, I rust everything and this stuff will help with that. And it smells like barbecue. So that's a, that's a big bonus, but that's it. That is everything. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know what your absolute essentials for your toolkit are like a little EDC toolkit, light duty stuff, 
like household things, whatever. Let me know what your essentials are in the comments down below. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.